were just we kept being asked questions like oh what's the most influential things to you like in music and we were like fuck that we want to ask the important questions like like what motherfucker went those bees are hiding something good in there like i'm gonna fucking see what those bees are hiding and get that honey what fucking weirdo decided to make mayonnaise cool and just say what are all these big circles on the ceiling for i don't really know actually hi my name is charlie and uh, cool. 20 years old and, and a little bit and I like to eat pizza and hang out with my friends and last night I stayed up to watch Breaking Bad and I missed it. Watch videos all day long of cats. Oh no everyone's gonna find out I'm just a bloody grebo. Uh, yeah so when I was younger I used to listen to well, when I was growing up, like my dad always used to make me listen to like prog rock music, so bands like Genesis and Pink Floyd and stuff. And I used to really, really fucking hate. Can I swear? Am I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to really fucking hate it. So I used to be like sitting in the sc in the car on the way to school, and it'd be like blaring out like selling England by the pound, and I'd just be like, "This is so shit, Dad. Please, can we change it? This is so embarrassing." And uh, yeah, the other day I spent like 30 quid on Genesis Records. So from, from years of hating his music, it's slowly starting to catch up on me. When I started being like in school and being a teenager and stuff, I used to listen to a lot of bands like New Found Glory and Brand New. That was like 10, 11 years ago, and I'm now still listening to the same, same four bands, buying the same records and getting stupid tattoos of their silly lyrics on my legs. <laughs> I'm not really one that believes in guilty pleasures, like I don't really feel guilty for liking something but I do kind of hide the fact that I think the Spice Girls are the greatest pop band to ever exist. When I moved into a house with some of my friends a few months ago, I uh, bought my Spice Girls Greatest Hit CD with me and uh, they found it very quickly. It gets heavy rotation in our house. <laughs> So when I was growing up, I used to live in a house in Hersham, which is like just outside of Kingston and Surbiton with my parents. Like I was born in Kingston, so I pretty much grew up there for the last like 20 odd years. And then I think six weeks ago, I moved to a house in Brixton with five of the best people. There's just a constant fear that you're about to get pranked in the house. You'll be walking through and you'll just go into your room or something and you'll like sit down on your bed and you'll just look up at the ceiling and there'll be your bank card like just glued to the roof. The other day I came home and found that my laptop screen had just been changed to loads of videos of Morrissey and I really fucking hate Morrissey. Um, <laughs> this is one my mum won't be happy about but um, we were playing like an all-day festival, like I play in a post hardcore band. Um, we were doing like an all-day festival in Bristol, I think it was. We'd had the night off the day before, so we all went out into the town and got really drunk and came back to like one of the people's friends that we were staying at or something. I'm not really sure, it was like uni halls. And then played the all-day the next day. <laughs> Our stage time was like four in the afternoon, so I thought that I could just smoke and drink beers all day and be absolutely fine. It gets to our stage time and I'm like completely unable to walk. I'm supposed to be hitting drums in like 20 minutes, setting my drums up like knowing that I'm about to be sick. So I'm like, no, it's fine, I've got enough time, like I'll go be sick and then come back and play. And the stage manager's like, no, you gotta play now, you gotta play now, you gotta play now. So I'm like, fuck. So I start playing drums and um, yeah, I just threw up all over this dude's drum kit. <laughs> so whilst I'm like being sick over this guy's like really fucking nice drum kit, like trying to hit drums and like every time you hit drums and like a cymbal, like vomit just like flies up at you and it's just the most like gross experience I've ever been involved in. Yeah, it took like a year and a half for them to invite us back to Bristol. <laughs> Literally the worst. When I was growing up in Kingston, there used to be a shop called Beggar's Banquet. It used to be like part of Rough Trade Records and now JT's taken over and it's just Banquet Records and it's the coolest fucking place ever. It was, if it's 2013 now, it would have been 2001 or 2002. I was in the shop and I was like seven or eight years old and I was with my buddy Stu. I saw this like hymn vinyl on the wall and was just like, ah, oh, that band looks cool, they've got a fucking cool logo. So I just like bought a 10 inch of theirs and like got home and was just like, Dad, how do I play this? How do I play this? Like not having a single clue what the fuck it does. 
so he like put it on his record player I listened to it and yeah I just thought the band were really shit but I was really stoked on having vinyl about two years ago maybe like I just started collecting vinyl again and buying lots of records buying back like albums that I used to listen to when I was younger and like getting them on record just spending way too much money falling into a black hole of vinyl <laughs> Uh, approximately. Oh, I had my record collection valued the other day because I took out some insurance on it and it's about £8,000 worth of vinyl. It's only like between like 150 to like 200 records but I spent a lot of money on some of them. Yeah, well like both of my most like valued like record like money-wise and personal-wise is uh, Deja Tondu by Brand New. Like, it's my favourite band and my favourite record by them and yeah, I probably wouldn't be around if it wasn't for Brand New be really sad somewhere <laughs> yeah when I was like when I first started getting into like hardcore music and punk music like I used to really love a band called Comeback Kid they used to have a song called Wake the Dead there was always a line in it that I just thought was really fucking great that he's just like songs going on and then he just shouts like the words start living so I was like yeah so when I was like growing up like me and my mates always used to be like yeah stop living like rock out to that bit when it comes along I think it was Halloween on like 2011 or something and I was like right I'm, I'm gonna get a tattoo this weekend so I booked in with my friend Tom to get a tattoo of like a dagger and a skull and like the words start living so I like booked it in and then like three four hours before I was just like oh I better quickly google it and like make sure that it's the right lyric googled it and it was completely wrong like instead of it being start living it was stop living I just was like reading it being like nah fuck that that's horrible so uh, yeah like, got a wrong comeback kit tattoo on the back of my arm. I saw them at the bar fly the other day and I was trying to try and one of them to like go and tell them my story and then just bottled it last minute. Completely bottled it. <laughs> like my mum will probably be really unhappy because she doesn't know that I got this the other day. I got it like a few weeks before I moved out and uh, there's a brand new song where there's a line that's like some men die under the mountain looking for gold and like others die looking for a hand to hold got my man Bob Dunn in Worthing to tattoo some hands in a gold mine. That one, I really like records, so I got a gramophone with a pentagram in the middle of it because it looked way too friendly, <laughs> so we thought we'd make it a bit more evil. And then uh, I got a pizza slice to like fill a little gap there, but a lot of people always ask me, like, why'd you get a pizza slice tattooed on your arm? And A, I just really fucking love pizza. B, like, may sound a bit stupid, but pizza's never going to make me really sad. Like, a lot of people are really quite shit and a lot of people do a lot of horrible things and pizza's always going to be there with my back. And then just a bunch of other random shit on my arm. Like, that one cost me like £13. Got it done as like a bro tattoo with my buddy Connor. That one, I just really wanted an eagle on my arm. And then I've just got a bunch of really stupid tattoos on my thighs of like my best friend's band name which have like now broken up so I'm stuck with that and then I've got like a skull wearing like a wizard sorting hat and then like a Deftones album cover like on my other thigh the word Tisky across my ankle because it's the greatest beer Tisky saw me like tweet something about them and like started following me and then messaged me being like hey can we use like some of your pictures or something to like put on our Facebook page and whatnot. So I was like, yeah, that's that's cool, like whatever. And then I like mentioned to them that I intern at a record label. So I was like, oh, you should check out Hassle Records on Twitter. We're at like 12,000 followers. Like you should send us over some free beer. So like I'm trying to put them in contact with like one of our project managers to like try and get a load of free beer from them. And it's looking quite good. Last year I went and saw Block Party at Birthdays in Dalston. It was like 180 cap venue, which was mental. Then afterwards there was like a free bar downstairs. We just got really fucking drunk. And then the next day I was just like hugging a toilet for like five hours. And then went to go see a hardcore band in the evening called Ceremony. <clears throat> I was like having the best time watching this band. Like really fucking good band. You should, everyone should listen to Ceremony. And I was just like, in like the old blue, they have like this big like pillar in the middle of the venue. And like, so there's people like moshing and whatever like going on there. And I'm literally like hugging this pillar, like just trying so hard not to be sick, like watching this band. And they're all like in their 40s and 50s and they're just fucking like really old dudes. 
and they're just like having the greatest time and I'm just terrified like hugging this pillar like no this is horrible but lately I've been really listening to bands like The National their album Trouble Will Find Me is like probably my favourite record this year everybody should go listen to a band called Palm Reader like they're really fucking cool dudes like me and a few buddies like put on shows in Guildford and their bass player Josh is part of that so if you're in Guildford come down to a GE1 punk show I sing in a punk band called Scum we've broken up but you should listen to our music, it's all for free, and it's all fucking great. Everyone should just always listen to Brand New and have the best time. <laughs> Do you want me to like tell the story of Scum? Please, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing ever. So, um, it's a bit like, we kind of made a, our punk band Scum like out of spite, I guess. But my best buddy Tate, he's a singer and um, He's just always wanted to like start a punk band with us and just be like the most out of control shit punk band. He went traveling around Europe for like a month and a half or something last year. So like the rest of us, like a few of our mates were sat in a pub in Kingston and we were just like, yeah, should we start a punk band then? Seeing as he's away. There was like four of us in the pub and like me, my buddy Joe and Will, we're both drummers and our friend, Lee, well, three of us are drummers and Liam plays guitar. So we were like trying to work out which one of us like actually gets to play drums, who plays bass and who plays guitar. So like originally in Scum it was supposed to be like Joe playing drums, Will and Liam on guitar and like me, like I got lumped with like bass and vocal duties. So like I've n never sung, shouted, been aggressive in a band, played a bass or like done anything outside of like sitting down behind some drums. Me and Liam had like got together like the following day and like we decided to call our band Scum and like we drew our little logo on like a little whiteboard app on my phone and then like print screened it and like used that as our logo. So we wrote some songs and they're the fucking shittest punk songs you'll ever hear. They're just fucking dreadful. After we'd written like three or four songs we were like should we start playing some shows? We uh, got booked to play in Kingston at the Peel with a band called Arse Full of Chips, who are just like the most ridiculous band. Like they've got one member of their band that he's just there to get naked. Like he doesn't sing or play guitar. He stands on stage like in a dress, like just like dancing for a while. And then like they'll play one song and he'll just like take his dress off, like throw it away. And he'll just start like doing roly polies like around the venue, like completely fucking naked. Yeah, so that was who Scum's first show was with. For the show we decided to make some t-shirts. A lot of our songs are just about like angry fucking idiots at the pub who just want to get pissed and just shout fucking angry stupid shit at people. So like to make our shirts we like spray painted the logo like we like cut it out on paper like spray painted it onto some t-shirts and then like sprayed like a little bottle logo onto the back of like the first 10 of them. And then got one of those like spray squirty bottle things and like filled it up with like fag ash, like cigarette butts and Stella and like sprayed all the shirts in it and then like set them all on fire and then like I think one of them got pissed on or something. They're all just fucking, they stank so bad. They were in my house for like three days and like my whole house just smelled like a pub. It was fucking gross. Took them to the show, like selling them for either like two pounds or a pint of Stella. People are fucking dumb. Like we just got so many pints of Stella that evening and like two pound is way cheaper than a beer. <laughs> and we sold out of literally like all of our t-shirts and like the three gigs that we did. <laughs> I used to work in a coral. I was like an assistant manager for like eight, nine months, something like that. I'd always have to deal with like thousands and thousands of pounds on a daily basis. I'd just like every so often get like a couple hundred pounds worth of notes, just like line them out on the table and just like with a huge fucking whiteboard marker, just write like scum on them. And then on the other side, like just post the link to like our SoundCloud, which I think is like soundcloud.com forward slash scum UK or something like that. Just write it on all these notes and like on some of them just write scum crew fuck you and just really horrible things and like one of them I just made a point of like setting on fire a little bit and just writing scum did it on it and whenever like I did that I'd just take them over to the bank straight away like I'd just put them in the thing and like muddle them up so that you couldn't always see that like every note had scum written on it. <laughs>
So like one day I took like six hundred pounds worth of scum notes to the bank, and the woman was just like, "Did you do this?" I was just like, "No, nah, customer put it in the machine. <laughs> Wasn't me." <laughs> Is that illegal? I didn't do it. It's all right. Oh, I got that fucking scum tattoo as well, didn't I? That was great. One of my tattoos that my mum's actually gone like, "Yeah, I quite like that." So um, yeah, just got scum tattooed underneath it. I was sat on my bed playing Xbox while I stuck guitarist Liam was just like sat there with a needle, just poking it in. Homemade and stupid. Actually a cover up of another homemade tattoo that went really wrong. I got a little bit drunk, like not even to the point where you can like make a promise to someone like, yeah, I'll let you tattoo your initials on me. Like a uh, like, silly level of like slightly tipsy where it just seemed like a good idea. So I promised my friend Charlie that she could um, tattoo her initial. Well, like I call her Peen Queen because she's a bit of a hussy. And uh, so I let her like poke in like a P and a Q into my ankle and like we did it in like some uni halls in Colchester. She was just using like biro and a needle and like just fucking like stabbing my ankle. I'm pretty certain I got like an infection in my leg or something like it was gross for like two months and then like it all healed and like all the ink fell out and now there's just like a scar on my ankle of the letters P, Q. We put the word scum over the top of it and you can't really see it now. <laughs> I'm quite a nice person, quite like laid back and quite chilled. But then in the scum songs I'm like, fuck you, bottle me, like get me a fucking pint of Stella. Just shouting like the most horrible fucking things at people in the face, like we've got a song called A Pint of Piss, which the chorus is like a pint of piss, a pint of piss, neck 12 pints filled one with piss. But I'm not like that in real life, I'm quite nice. <laughs> like, I think for the others it's more of like just a bit of a piss take and a bit of a laugh and like all the lyrics are totally like a bit of a laugh. But like at the same time it's kind of really cool because I never get an opportunity to like be on stage but not be playing drums. So like it's really cool because I've been able to do the things that like I've been watching bands for like years fucking like having a great time on stage and just been like incredibly jealous like yeah I want to do this and like even though it's a bit of a piss take like it's definitely the most fun thing I've ever been a part of musically because I've always grown up listening to like emo and punk and metal and kind of everyone that I was friends with at school just listened to like drum and bass and like I remember one kid being like if it's got guitars in it it's not real music and like I've never wanted to fucking punch someone in the forehead so much like that sentence was just dreadful the other friends I had that listened to like similar kinds of music were more into like heavier metal and stuff and I was in school like growing up listening to like Converge and fucking black metal bands and shit that like no one really cared about like I remember in like 2009 wearing a Burzum t-shirt and having like the piss ripped out of me being like oh you like black metal you like black metal and it's only like four years ago but now like the internet's just going mental for Burzum and stupid shit it's crazy school was pretty weird no one really liked punk and it's just me <laughs> My mum's got the fucking weirdest taste in music, like I literally don't even know what she likes. Like last year she went to Reading with uh, her friend Eileen. Her son plays in a band and like she got given guest passes for the weekend for Reading. My mum just called me up being like, yo, you know that dude that has his hair really long like yours, like that plays in that rock band? I'm like, what, the Foo Fighters? And she's like, yeah, I'm fucking watching the Foo Fighters, I'm watching the Foo Fighters. Like, put on BBC One now, like you can watch them at Reading. And I'm like, I hate you so much, mum. Stop making me jealous. I know that she likes the Foo Fighters <laughs> because of that one show. She listens to a lot of Yumi at Six albums quite a lot. Like, my mum's been to so many fucking Yumi at Six shows. Uh, she really likes like Donny Osmond and it's like some pop music from when she was younger or something. Yeah, she took me to see the Spice Girls movie when I was really young. Like, her and all her friends went and she was like looking after me or something. She made me go and see like the Spice Girls movie. I was just really upset because it was at the same time as like the Keenan and Kel movie was in the cinema. I want to be watching Keenan and Kel at Good Burger. Like, why am I sitting here watching the Spice Girls? Blame that movie. That one thing's a catalyst. Years to come, you'll secretly like the Spice Girls. <laughs> me and some friends dressed up as the Spice Girls the other day, actually. <laughs> it was like me and like three other girls and Stone Cold Sober. I was Sporty Spice for a bit. <laughs> realised that I wanted to be Posh Spice, but it's just a bit not going to happen. So yeah, I'm Sporty Spice, I guess. Do like football. <laughs>